Okay, what is GitHub Copilot Workspace? Dude, this is like 13 seconds of just unneeded content. Can you just tell me what it is, man? Microsoft, I don't know who you're advertising to. This is crazy. All right, Copilot, native dev environment designing a design for everyday tasks. What does that even mean? Go from idea to specification. It's like if TikTok had a baby with YouTube with a single click. Edit the details of any steps before generating a plan. I gotta turn this down, it's so loud. The AI is purple. See how Copilot plans to implement the changes. Oh my goodness, it's like Devin. And let Copilot generate the code. You can be confident. Is this like Devin? Are we doing Devin just with more trap? With more dubstep? Is this just Devin plus dubstep? Oh no, oh gosh. Can we rename Copilot to Kevin? Kevin. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, let's see now. Okay, we're gonna do it live preview. A lot of assumptions were just made in that live preview. Like I think a lot of people probably missed that entire live preview business, which is if you're running from the browser, you make all these changes, you then press play. I mean, all of that made the assumption that everything is probably written in JavaScript. Somehow I doubt that we're like streaming video of an application being ran on a, on a server. Why aren't they using dark mode? Who is their customers? What is this? I think this report, I almost vomited. All right, okay, create pull request. All right, I got a hot take for this. I got a steaming hot take for this one. Okay, I got a hot take for this one. Um, I think that Microsoft, given the fact that they give Copilot to students for free, would rather see you be more incapable than anything else. And so when I see this part and I see what we're seeing, I cannot understand why you would want this. I get that there's like the every now and then super simple bugs that are just so dang simple you could just make it happen. But man, driving all of your implementation, like having the implementation start off on GitHub just seems like such a wild experience. Like I, I do understand, I, I mean, I, I, I really want this idea of the AI assisted code review to be real. Um, and what I mean by real is that I love this idea that you should be able to create a PR and then the co-pilot can go up to you and say, man, hey, you know, I've noticed that you probably didn't consider this other part of your program that relies on this, but it does look like under these conditions, something might happen. Why don't you give that a quick review just to make sure? Hey, you know, there's this one security problem that could happen. Why don't you give this a quick review just to make sure it doesn't happen? But the problem is, is we've already seen that the I and LLM stands for intelligence, and we've already seen how bad it gets with just all the d various security issues right now that are just going wild with these LLM takes that are just absolutely off base, false positive, absolutely crazy. And so it's, I, I want this to be real. I do. I want it to be real so bad because it sounds great. Hey, there's no I in LLM. You got the joke then. The I in LLM stands for intelligence. You got the joke. Good job. I just don't see how this is going to work out. And then this co-pilot, co first off, I couldn't tell what the hell happened in this commercial, okay? Maybe I'm not Zoomer enough. I think there. this is a very intentional commercial. This is a very intentional commercial. I assume this is for Zoomers because my mom's way too much Boomer to know what the hell happened. And she would just be confused as, as it gets seeing all these words fly across the screen. I'm like a little bit more used to the words flying and Zooming around. So I kind of I kind of can like kind of do it. But man, this feels like something that there. This is a very targeted thing for people. You know, like this is targeting what I would consider newer people entering in uh, to programming, trying to like get you to understand that this is this is the way. This is the future. This is the new dev environment. Okay, which is such. Yeah, welcome to the new dev environment. I can't believe how old I sound. Okay, I feel like I sound old. I feel like this guy that's like, yeah, they're preying on the youths. 
Man, what has happened to me? Oh my gosh. Oh, shoot. Dang it. Oh no. I am just unsure how this is going to be practically useful. And what I mean by practically useful is that you open up GitHub, you see a problem, and then you're going to get these, you're going to do like what, a code review on mobile? And you're going to hope that you got all the code, like, I mean, it's going to suggest a new piece of code for you to run. Does it come, it now, it now comes with tests as well? Is the test useful? Are they actually thought through? Yeah, they're green for this experience, maybe. I mean, Facebook's like whole example of things running green and doing all that were so thin to begin with. And, and they only had like a success rate of like, what was it, 30%, 15% to be, be able to even generate code that was like syntactically correct. I li let's say I have liked Copilot, then I hated it, then I took a break for the past few weeks. Yeah, I'm on like week four of no Copilot or week three of no Copilot. I've just been enjoying it. I've been genuinely enjoying not continuing on this whole thing. Primogen, welcome to the Boomer Club. We meet every Wednesday at 5.30 a.m. at Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, man, I want them so bad. You know, some people love the autocomplete from Copilot, and I think autocomplete, I think a smart autocomplete has always been a great use of LLMs. I'm not quite convinced that it's a great use. Like, it's it's a perfect use. But it's nice. It's been good. I've been happy. I've currently turned it off. See, I had the chance of giving it a try and recorded a slightly longer version, six minutes hands-on. It's far from doing everything by itself. But with the right fine-tuning of the instructions, I, I see it can help. Help what, though? Can you, can you be a little bit more specific on that? Like, what is it helping? That's what I don't understand. Like, what are you getting out of it? Was pain in the hands? Yeah, like, like I said, I think the autocomplete can sometimes be very interesting. Again, uh, read your repo and suggest where uh, to look at, then propose solutions. Yeah, but, I mean, have you seen the success rate on any of the security vulnerabilities or any of those things? Like, when people say it just needs to be, it just needs to be trained better. It's just like, one. Of, it, 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 to me, it just feels like a fallacy. Like, we're falling, I don't know what the name of the fallacy is. It just feels like a, a, the ever-perpetual fallacy of like, it's just not, you know, it's going to be good. Don't worry. Whatever it is. I don't know what you call it. Uh, futurism, right? It's like some sort of futurism, retro-futurism of like the thing is going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet. It's like right there. I'm going to say this. I don't think LLMs are going to be some huge, great iteration in programming. I think our current state of LLMs aren't great. I don't think they're going to be great. I think they can be neat. I think Copilot can be okay. Like there's sometimes I'm like, hell yeah. Copilot was pretty cool just then, but that's about it. That's that. That's what I think. Now I think that there could exist an AI that's much better. I think that I think that's possible. I'm not disagreeing with that, but I am absolutely under no guise that that Copilot and this current set of of AI experiences are anything more than just some sort of like magical initial feeling into disillusionment. Everybody know that's leaned in hard enough on these things. It starts off as, wow, these are the greatest things ever. They're going to solve all of our problems. Everything is going to be better because of them. And they end with, wow, they're actually like, if you really give it a very specific case and you really train it on this one thing, it can sometimes be kind of useful. I don't know if that's really like the win that you think it is. Like, I don't, I just don't know. Anyways, uh, just for those that, again, I say this all the time and I want to keep saying it. For those that are like new to programming, you're worried about AI, I don't think you have anything on the near horizon to like quote unquote worry about. I think the biggest thing you need to worry about is the fact that all you've done is produce the same content as everybody else. You've all taken a React class. You've all produced the same React portfolio. You've all used Redux. You've all used React server components. You've all done all the latest, greatest things. And that's all you've ever done is you've just plugged a bunch of different things together and you called yourself a portfolio when real life, real work is none of those things. And it is arduous, long tasks and old code bases using technology that hasn't been talked about actively on Twitter for the last five and a half to 10 years. The name is the primogen.